Beaumont and welcome back to another episode of Get Published TV. This is the only dedicated show on the internet to help you to write, publish and market your own best selling book. Now in the last few episodes we have been talking about the all important process of typesetting which is actually the fancy term that we use for the layout and design of your actual book. So I covered some really important points in the last two videos, so please go back and um, you know watch and listen to those videos uh, because then this one will make a lot more um, sense. Um, someone also asked a question and that was that where does this step fit into the whole process? So let me just quickly um, you know draw it for you visually. Um, we start um, here with the writing process and then after writing we normally have the process which is called uh, editing. We'll talk more about editing uh, in the future. Then afterwards we have the next step which is called proofreading. And uh, then typesetting actually comes in between proofreading and printing. So this here is typesetting and then we have printing. Um, which is right here. So the important thing to know is sometimes people they write their book and then they have it maybe have it edited but they haven't had it checked by a proofreader and they actually typeset the book. They actually get these two mixed up. And then what actually happens is is their book has been typeset and then they give it to a proofreader and then the proofreader goes through it and they find a whole lot of mistakes and then it can be very expensive if you're working with your typesetter to then go through and have them manually make all of those changes because um, they're going to be you know charging you on an hourly rate and if they're a really good um, typesetter you know you could be looking at 40 50 60 dollars an hour to make those simple changes that should have been picked up before you went to the typesetting process now that's not to say that when it gets there, there may be some things that you want to change and that's okay. But if there are too many changes, sometimes it completely throw out the whole um, design of the book because a book may have a certain number of pages and you can't just demand a book that says, I want this book to have you know, 165 pages. Well, they work in certain increments, like in, you know, in pages of 12 or 16, depending on how many that you actually, um, depending on what printer press you actually use. So therefore, um, you, the, the, you don't want to be paying for blank pages at the end. So a professional typesetter is going to try and squeeze your book down into a multiple of 12 or 16 or if they can't then they're going to try and make sure that if you're paying for those extra pages that you're going to use all those pages. So by making too many changes it stuffs everything up and they get really annoyed and it ends up costing you more than what it should. Got the point? All right, so now you know where it fits in. Thanks very much for asking the question. All right, let's continue on. In the last episode, we spoke about fonts being a really important thing. We spoke about what type of um, um, style that you actually use um, and also what type of um, um, size that you're going to use as well. And another thing which is very interesting, um, which I can't remember the term, but uh, could be called pagination or maybe if, if you know what I'm talking about, then you can fill out a comment below. But it's actually the spaces between each of the letters and then the spaces between each of the word and then the spaces between each of the lines. There are different words to describe all those different things, but a professional typesetter will be able to guide you in making those um, decisions as well. Um, so uh, just know that all that stuff, there's fine details, but there's a saying when, it, when it, with books especially, and that, and that is the devil is in the details. So you've really got to make sure you get these details right. Um, we spoke about um, paragraph um, style, which I won't cover again. We spoke about chapter titles, and now we're actually going to look at headers and footers. So with most books, what we have is that you have the actual um, book, and on the left-hand side, you normally have the title of the book is on the left-hand side. So the title of the book, this is called Rules for Renegades. Um, that's um, This is a book that I'm hope, hoping to read soon. I've heard a lot about it, so um, I'm looking forward to getting into it and then on the right hand side you normally have the actual chapter title so if I flick through um, on the left hand side like I'm doing right now I'm seeing 
the same um, header on every single one of the left hand um, pages. On the right hand side, obviously it changes based on what paragraph that I'm actually going to be reading. Um, now also you're going to have to uh, decide whether or not you're going to have the page numbers with the actual um, at the top, so right next to where you have the uh, header, or in many cases what you have is you have the page numbers at the bottom in the footer. So this is another example here, again on the left hand side we've got the title of the book, on the right hand side we've actually got the title of the chapter, and at the bottom we've got the page numbers as well. Um, now there's some other things which you can do, one of my friends who um, uh, has republished a number of books um, has his website actually at the bottom of every single page because one of the, the biggest reasons why he's writing and publishing his book is to have people go to his website so then he can build a relationship with them and then on sell other products and services. So sometimes people may feel that as being a little bit too what's the word, um, a bit too full on or a, a little bit um, too much to have that on every single page. But if that's your primary reason for doing so um, and you want to get the most amount of people to your website, then it may be something that you could consider. All right. Um, there's different things that you can do. Um, in my books, what I've actually done is I've put the... Um, the um, page numbers in a grey box and the reason why I chose to do that is you know when you kind of I like when you actually look at the books that you're not not just seeing just the same color so if you look there you can actually see that it goes to grey so by putting it in a grey box you can actually see a grey tab just on the top and uh, because some of my pages also are in grey as well like for example when I give away free gifts you probably can't see this but there's some you know little grey lines that just adds a little bit of uh, you know, an interest and another dimension to the book. All things to think about. So look, I, I spent like a, a month probably researching other books and I'd go through and I'd look at and i go, yeah, I really like that. Um, this is another sort of style. You can see the chapter, um, you know, the, the, the chapter title here. You know, it's taking most of about, about a half a page and he's got chapter eight there, the millionaire mindset. This is my friend Pat Masidi and here he's got a little black tab. And again, that creates for interest when you're actually flicking through the book that you can see those tabs represent the start of new chapters. So you just got to say what do you like the look and what do you like the feel of. So headers and footers are important. Another a couple of things very quickly is the use of diagrams. Are you going to dedicate a whole page to diagrams? Are you going to uh, wrap text around those diagrams if they're only small? Or some people even have a section at the back of the book where they have all their diagrams together, sometimes on color pages because it's too expensive to print the entire book with color. Um, so there's some decisions that you're going to have to um, make as well when it comes to the use of um, diagrams. Um, then you've got illustrations. Um, and again, are you going to a illustrate is going to be color, not color. Are they going to be wrapped around um, the text? Are you going to actually, you know, cut off half a page in order to put your illustration in? They're all decisions that you're going to have to make from a typesetting point of view um, as well. Um, so this is going to be important, obviously, for either non-fiction writers or and many fiction writers have illustrations. Certainly, ones if they're writing for, you know, uh, teenagers or young adults, there may be some illustrations and diagrams that are in the book. Then another thing to quickly look at is things like novelties. And uh, novelties are things like where sometimes people have quotes written in like a star. Or um, a friend of mine, um, Terry Hawkins, um, she has um, her books um, where she's got actual... Um, with my phone ringing there. She's actually got a whole page where she's got dedicated to key points. I call those sort of novelties. Another friend of mine, he's a professional speaker and when he's quoting himself, he's got like a little microphone next to where he's quoting himself. Or sometimes if people interview someone else, they've got that in a gray, you know, gray box to separate where I'm talking versus now I'm interviewing somebody else. Or case studies for an example as well. Um, you know, you may have one of those director what do you call it, clappers, um, you know, if you've got a book about directors and you're giving like a certain um, teaching point, for example. So they, I call those the novelties or gimmicks, you know, they can really, really work. They can add a lot of interest to the book and make it much easier on the eye to actually read so it's less intimidating. But they can also, uh, if you have too many of them, they can be a bit confusing and people don't under actually understand what they actually mean. 
Um, and another thing to really look at as well is that you know the number of pages, which I've already kind of spoken about as well. You kind of need to 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 uh, talk to your typesetter about um, you know what is the multiples, and maybe talk to your printer actually first and look at some estimations. And and then if you give all those tables, um, so I haven't got them in front of me, so I'll be making them up. But like if it's okay, we can either do 64 pages, or we can do 96, or we can do this number or this number. So that way your typesetter knows you know whether he's got to pat it out to make it fill up the the entire pages that you've got available or to maybe try and cut out a couple of pages or to tighten it up to get it down to the lowest multiple to save you money so they're things that's why it's really important that you need to do this in conjunction with your printer so you've got to talk to your printer while you're talking to your typesetter to make sure that uh, those two people are on the same page so they know how many pages that they're working towards and also what size is the book going to be like for example this is a classical B format and my books are a C format. Now you've got to talk to your printer and um, decide which size your book is going to be and then give those dimensions to your typesetter so then they know you know how to lay your book out. All right I think we've um, you know um, reached our time or maybe even we've gone over. Um, trust you've got lots of value from this uh, all important step. We'll probably cover it again um, from different angles and with more detail in future episodes where we'll dedicate a whole episode to just talking about fonts or a whole episode to just talking about um, you know how to actually get the cost down when it comes to typesetting um, so keep watching get published TV leave us your comments below if you're here for the first time connect with us on Facebook Twitter through RSS feed or iTunes and stay connected um, because you're going to continue to get some great information over the upcoming weeks and months this is Dale Beaumont signing off see you again next time